Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn champagne corks, or they could be wine corks. Uh, I'm just using these because I thought they were pretty, and you can turn them into keychains. I'm gonna tell you where I got everything. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna put a couple together. Those are three that I made uh, this morning. They come together in absolutely, oops, no time at all. And then there's two more right here. So it should be really fun. I'm thinking that these could make some great Christmas gifts or stocking stuffers or just a fun thing to give a friend, your mom, your sister, your babysitter, a teacher, you know. Well, I don't know if I would give a teacher a keychain made out of a wine cork. I don't know if you know her or him. Um, okay, so let's start at the very beginning. All right, um, there are a lot of things that you could use to attach this part, um, which they look like this. You know, your, your typical key ring. They come in different sizes. There's a lot of things that you could use to attach it to your cork, but I have found the easiest and least expensive way is just to use these little, uh, what do they call them? Screw eyes. I picked these up at Home Depot. They're Everbuilt brand. These are number 216. They're the smallest ones. They're kind of a silvery color. It says that they're zinc. Um, and they're super easy to use. And um, there are some actual jewelry things that you could use, but heck, <laughs> You can use this and then use these for, you know, other projects, um, like the cork tassels that we made this week. So this is what they look like. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna put one at the top center of your cork, and you're just gonna push it in a little ways, easy. And then all you're gonna do is twist it in. And it will go right in, seriously, easy. You don't need to drill a hole for this or to do anything, and then it'll stop when it's done. Okay, so I'm gonna put one on the top and also I'm gonna put one on the very bottom because that's where all the dangly fun stuff is gonna go. Okay. And as far as the dangly fun stuff goes, I am just using what I had on hand. And I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago, I made myself some jewelry. Um, and so I had some beads and things on hand. So I just used what I had. Um, I don't have any fancy actual jewelry making tools or anything, and you don't need it. Um, most of my beads that I use and the little charmy things, I'll show you those, they came from Walmart or Michaels or Joann's uh, or Hobby Lobby, you know, they're just craft level uh, jewelry supplies. I mean, I'm thinking now a lot of it actually came from Michaels. Okay, so that's the bottom and here's the top. And it does not matter if they're not aligned it doesn't. Okay, so I think personally that if you're going to use a champagne cork, then put the wider part of it at the top. And that is where you will attach your findings. And there's several different styles that you can get. This one, I cannot remember where I got it. I'll hold it up close. It has a variety of different sizes of these key, uh, these key rings in it, and it also has some of these, which these are kind of nice. So what I did is I just put what I really need, what tool I really need is that, that um, split ring spreader thing, so I don't kill my fingernails. But anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these 
I'll get one more. Hopefully I have another one. Yes, I do. For the smaller one. Okay, so that's one kind that you can do. While I was at Walmart yesterday, getting some things that I needed, um, I stumbled across a little key ring set that I'll show you in just a minute. So I'm just gonna put this one on too. Okay, and this is what it looked like. It was around $3, roughly. This is the back. It's in Walmart craft department with the jewelry stuff. It had three pieces, and this is what they look like. So they have this, whoops, this little thing at the top that you can, you know, use to open the little hook. And then a key ring. And that's sort of the same purpose that this is doing here. Um, and on this one, it's sort of the same purpose that I put this hook on this one for. So you could clip it to your purse if you want, or belt what poop, or I don't know, whatever you want to do. Okay, so let me do one more cork um, real quick. And I know you're going to ask, where did I get all these corks? I have a whole bag over here. Um, I just one day was at my local Goodwill and there was a bag of them. I'll show it to you. And I think it was $5.99 and that for me at a thrift store, $5.99 anything is kind of pricey. So I thought long and hard about it and I'm so glad I grabbed it because I have done a lot of different projects using it, so you can see that. I have seen other, um, some pictures on Pinterest where people put a, what are those things called? Those silver, like round things, <laughs> right here before they put the eye hook on. Um, what are those things called? If you, can, if you can think of that word, tell me. Um, Anyways, I didn't say any of my normal stuff, which I, lately I've just kind of been so excited about my projects and so ready to just jump right into them. But, uh, or maybe I did say it actually, but let me ask you this. Are you new to DIY dreaming? Because if you are, I would love to know. I would love to be able to say hello. Washer, that's the word. Thank you. Um, so if you're new, say new or relatively new in the comments so I can see your name and say hello to you. Um, yeah. Okay, so I have one in the bottom and one in the top. And I have two of these. Where's the one that I just finished? Ready to go. Okay, this is my bag. And this is after I've used it. So it was, $5.99 and I said at Goodwill <laughs> and I so I grabbed it oh you know what I'm in the middle of this blessing box thing right now I need to um, put some corks in my blessing boxes I will do that okay so you can get the pieces the key ring pieces at any craft store whatever style you like the best okay and then the little dangly things at the bottom, What after playing with this for an hour, what I decided that I liked is to have two long dangly pieces and then a little charm of some sort. And this is not wanting to cooperate, but it's a heart. Okay, that's one. And then this one is two long dangly pieces and then this thing that looks kind of like a key, an antique key. And um, I have a bunch of those. I, I think I picked them almost all up at Walmart. Here's another one with a couple of dangly pieces and then a key. I'm gonna show you how to make the dangly pieces. And here's another one with two dangly pieces and a key. And then this one's cute. This is different. This one has two dangly pieces and then it has an angel wing. You could use any kind of charm 
or doodad that you might have hanging around or that's, you know, important to you. This, this was something I had a while ago. I, um, it's just a little picture frame. Um, Walmart seems to always have these bronzy colored uh, keys. Here's another style of key. Um, it could be a silver charm. Just absolutely whatever you like. I stuck with all silvery looking things for these projects. And you know what I was thinking? Um, my, I have a couple of charm bracelets that are just sterling silver, but they're loaded. And um, I was thinking it, would, it might be fun to use some of those silver charms on one of this, but it's in the safe box at the bank. So, and I haven't worn it in years. Okay, um, so I don't remember what these little things are called, but this is what we're going to build our dangly pieces on. You see that? It's like a long kind of a pin with a round hook at the bottom. So, and I had a bunch of them in my a box of jewelry making stuff. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to dig through one of my little boxes of beads, which I actually already did. And this is what I pulled out. Um, it's just a variety of things. This funny turquoise, another kind of funny turquoise. Pick the colors that you like some little blue round things and some little turquoise colored round things. Um, yeah, so if you want something pink or purple or, you know, whatever your style is, uh, you can find beads in those colors. At Hobby Lobby, oh my word, they have a ton. Okay, so I'm gonna start out by using one of these little turquoise beads and then I think. And then I'm going to do a blue one. And then I'm going to do this small turquoise round thing. And then I'm going to do this funny thing that reminds me of a heart, the shape of it. And then we'll do a, a blue and a turquoise. And this is a lot to put on one of these little dangly things. They can be short or long, whatever you like. Okay, and then I don't have any great jewelry pliers, but you can get those, or if you make jewelry, you may already have something like that. But I'm gonna use this one for right this second. We're basically just going to bend this other end, I don't wanna drop any pieces, in a loop. So nothing will come off of it and it won't be sharp. Okay, and so all I'm gonna do, come closer, is take my, these are needle nose kind of things, and grab the end of it. And then I'm just going to try not to drop it. Um, just bend it around. It doesn't have to be a perfect loop. Let me put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's a little better. Easy. It's not sharp or anything. Um, and um, about five or more years ago, I made a bunch of um, bookmarks that I crocheted and then I put these little dangly things on them for friends. And so I already had in my jewelry box a whole bunch of these that were already made. So that really sped up the process. I'm sure that you can buy something like that. Or you could just do individual um, beads. It's, this is totally uh, not meant to be hard at all. 
and I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and buy a bunch of tools. You do need two, a pair of two pliers um, that are small enough for jewelry. Okay, and then we're gonna use a jump ring to attach our dangly things and one charm of some sort to the bottom of our champagne cork. So I'm just gonna pour these out. And you can get these everywhere too. You can also get the ones that have the split ring if, if you would feel safer using that. Okay, so what, well I need to pick out a little something something to go on this, let's see. Okay, we're gonna do these two together. They're not exactly the same, but that does not matter. Oh, no, wait. We're gonna do these together, these pink and green ones. We'll come back, because we're gonna do two. And here's our jump ring, and here's our champagne cork. And let's just do this big key, okay? So I'm going to take my pliers. I'll show you up close. And I, you know, I say this all the time. I am a crafter of all trades, a jack of all trades, a master of none. I know there's a lot of you out there that are probably really good at doing this kind of stuff. I just like to dabble in different things and I like variety and I think you guys do too. So today was the day to do this. Okay, I just split it open by just pulling this two different ways. And then I'm gonna thread it on the bottom of what needs to go a little bit wider. Okay, it's gonna go on the bottom because the dangly stuff is going on the bottom. The hardest part is to not drop it while you're doing this. And then I'm gonna put on the correct end, the actual professional round end of this. My two, Dang. okay, this keeps turning. Dangly pieces and then this long key. If you have stuff laying around, you know, make a couple, practice using what you have. And then if you think that you want to uh, make some of these for a gift, and then I just twisted it back together. Isn't that cute? Um, and then if you like it, you think you want to make some, then go out and buy, you know, the color of beads that you might specifically want. But try it. But you will need to have these for sure. And you'll need, if you're going to make the dangly things, you'll need to have these. And you'll need to have some jump rings to attach everything. And then you'll need your keychain stuff. Okay, so let's attach that. All right, this is really the hardest part. This is what's called a split ring. They're safer. Things, they don't get split open and things don't fall off of these. Uh, but they're also harder to open. So I'm just pulling it apart with my thumbnail. They're hard on your fingernails for sure. Until I can get this in there. Come on. There we go. Okay, so it's, you know, then you just thread it around. This one is really tight. This is the one that came in the package from Walmart with the three keychains. Super tight. Okay. And voila. So isn't that cute? You could do more than three dangly things on these if you want. If you guys like this project so far, um, and I will show you all of them up close again at the very end, so stay with me. But if you're liking this idea, then um, do some of this or this, or just tell me in the comments. I see lots of you are saying, I will be making these for sure. Um, yeah, it's a plier. They do make a plier to open split rings. I just don't happen to have one. Okay, and Joy says there is a split ring tool 
that really works well. Yeah, next time I'm at Walmart, I'm gonna look for that. But here's our, the one that we just made. Um, now I did have the dangly things all ready put together, but let's make one more. And we'll use this one that's easier to get open. Okay, where did I put? Okay, so we put our little eye screws, screw eyes is what they're called, in the top and the bottom. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the top on the keychain right now. This one uh, is probably not as good a quality and that's why it's much easier to open and get my, get it over my, okay, so there's the top. Oh, thank you for all those hearts. I love that. How does the screw stay in the cork? No, I didn't glue it. Each one of these has, I'll show you up close. They have a little screw on it. I don't know if that's blurry or if you can see or what. There's a little screw on it. So you jab it in far enough to get it started and then you just twist it and it twists itself right in. And cork is hard enough to keep it in. It's also soft enough that you can do it with your hands. If you're working on a piece of cork though, oh, keep the hearts and the thumbs coming. I appreciate that. If you ha are working on a, a wine cork or champagne cork that's really hard, um, then you could almost hammer a small nail into it before you put the little screw in. But I didn't use any glue, uh, and they, these are pretty secure. Now, I wouldn't hold on to this and hang off the edge of the Empire State Building and trust that it was gonna stay together. <laughs> no way. But, you know, it would probably pull out if you exerted any huge amount of force on it. But for a keychain with some little dangly doodads on the end of it, it's fine. If you're using solid gold doodads, then um, hot, uh, let's see, what would I do? Super glue or E6000. Martha says she's going to make some. A butter knife will work as a splitter too. Yeah, I've done that. Thanks for all the heart, Sherry. Okay, so let's pick out some more dangly doos. We're gonna use the ones that I made in advance. I love these. They both have a red, white, and blue theme. This one though looks like, I'm reaching for my glasses on my head and they're not on my head. Looks like it needs to be bent a little better on the end. Can you see that? It doesn't really have a loop. So I did not do a good job on that when I made these, whenever that was. I think this was also during the time when I was crocheting like a crazy woman. I was crocheting necklaces is what I was doing and I was totally enjoying it. I have to show you one of those sometime. Okay, we're gonna take the last bead off because it's just not long enough to accommodate all these beads and be able to do a little swirl at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the end of it and then I'm just gonna twist this wire around the needle nose part of my pliers and then you can pinch it in and straighten it out and da -da -da, there you go okay so let's do these two on this one and let me think about what do we want to use let's use one of these um cute little picture frames okay so i need another jump ring yeah, stay with me to the end because I'm gonna show you. Oh, you would like to see one of my crochet necklaces. I will look. I made them, um, okay, this was like a long time ago, but um, this is funny. So in my community Bible study that I'm involved in, 
we are not allowed to give Christmas gifts or end of the year gifts. There's no gift giving policy is what there is. But <laughs> there's not a uh, no craft giving policy. So I made them for everyone. <laughs> um, and I mean, all of my peers, my the leaders, um, and then I made them for friends, for Christmas presents. Um, I'll dig one out before I get off. So stay with me and I'll show you one of the crochet necklaces. Oh, I also made a ton of button bracelets. Okay, I'll just split that apart. And I'm gonna put my little dangly doos on here. Okay, so I have my little thing. Now, I'm gonna hopefully get it on without dropping it. Okay, and da da da, there we go. Isn't that cute? Okay, so let me pull. Oh, and I wanna show you another idea. Stay with me. Let me um, push some of this aside other than these and I'll grab one of the necklaces and um, I will also see if I can find the bracelets. This is just one of my tubs of jewelry stuff. But I still, even still with that, I don't have any of the real professional kind of stuff. Okay, I made all kinds of things. I made tassel-y things. I made necklaces. I am a craft crafter. That was something. Oh, this was a, um, these are, this is vintage sari ribbon. S-A-R-I, I think it's, you know, the Indian, that Indian fabric that, it reminds me of silk. It might be silk. And then I just put it on this. Um, I thought I saw, well, here's some. I don't know if these are any good ones or not. Um, I made them all different colors and styles and to be doubled up. And the thing is, as you're going along, oh yeah, this was a cute one. You, um, as you're going along, I'll show you up close. You do a crochet, you do your crochet steps and then you add a bead. Can you see that? This is a gray special floss that you can use. And so this is one of those necklaces that you would double it up. And then I made some that had, like this one had, um, this was mine. It had a pretty cross. I am always reusing things. This was a pretty cross on a necklace that I had from Silpata. And then this was a, um, a couple of coins that I collected when I was in Europe. Um, and my mom was so nice to have holes drilled in all of them. And she actually made me this necklace that has tons of coins on it. Anyways, so I took it apart a little bit to make this. And this one has these kind of silvery beads on it. Okay, stay with me because I'm going to show you also the button bracelets. Okay, and then some of them I did like this with a black thread and I used just different colors of the beads. I'm all dolled up. These look cuter with a, you know, a plain kind of a top. But I made all of these and I totally enjoyed it. I like to keep my hands busy at night. And so I would just do, just crochet, crochet, crochet at nighttime. 
And then these are just a couple with brown. And I alternated the different kinds of beads that were on there. Here's another one. Brown thread. And here's another one. I might have to get, and these are some of the dangly do's that I made. They were shorter. Um, do you guys want me to take pictures of these and include those in the comments? Okay, I already went over all the exact things to make the key cork chains, uh, or cork key chains, but I'll repeat that once more at the very end. Okay, let me see if I can find my, it's in here somewhere, oh my word. Okay, I made these also another year and gave them as gifts. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty. These are all vintage buttons. And um, some of my friends wanted to give them to like their mom and their grandma. See, isn't that pretty? That's just one style. So I made these little tags very rudimentarily on my computer that said mothers are like buttons. They hold everything together. So that was one. Um, here was a here was a red and black. My favorite, favorite one is I have two that have more valuable buttons on them um, that are out in the kitchen. But of course, this was just a little dangly, a long dangly do that I made with vintage mother of pearl buttons. Here's one with pastel colored buttons. Um, oh, here it is. This is the one. I guess I put it back in here. Okay, this is my absolute favorite. These are the most special buttons that I have. Look at this one. It's like a piece of jewelry. And then for some reason, I'm so attracted to these two colors of green and I love them together. And then I had some of these, I can't remember even now what they, these are called, these kind of buttons that have the glass inside of them. So that's what all of these bigger ones are. And then at the other end, I just did this little piece right here. So this actually is my own charm bracelet. I'm going to put it back out in the kitchen with, you know, my watch and stuff. I don't know why I put it in here, but I made this small also because I have a smaller wrist. Uh, so isn't that pretty? We'll have to do this sometime if you guys are interested. Tell me if you want to do button bracelets. You can use current buttons too. It doesn't have to be vintage. So that's one of mine. And then I made some of these more simple ones. You guys are going to think I'm crazy. I should have been in the crafting business a long time ago, but I wasn't because I didn't know. This is just some pretty mother of pearl that I put together. Um, oh, this is my other one. Isn't that pretty? It's got all these gorgeous vintage mother of pearl pieces and I did put some some little pearly things on there okay so that's a tour of my jewelry I don't know why I didn't think to do this before but um yeah so tell me in the comments if you want to do button bracelets and you could this could be super fun you do have to have a little bit more to actually make these, but you could make it using these kind of buttons that you can get at Walmart. They have them in different colors, so it doesn't have to be with expensive buttons. I love buttons and collect buttons, so that's what I wanted to do it with, and um, maybe we, I think I did already do a tutorial on this once, um, but Oh, you're so nice, Teresa. I'm just, I have been a crafter my whole life. 
As a little girl, I can remember making all kinds of things. And then I did it all through my life. And then I stumbled into doing this on Facebook and, you know, representing some companies that actually sell supplies. And yeah, I love it. I want to give you a little sneak peek of what I have coming up. I will get pictures of all of this. Okay, let me review what's on it. Okay, because um, Anne was asking. This is the keychain part. Um, this right here is a little screw eye. They're like miniature cup hooks. You get them from a hardware store. These came from Home Depot. They're teeny. This is what they look like. Okay. Then you need your cork. It doesn't have to be a champagne cork. It can be whatever cork you have. Then you need another screw hook. And then whatever dangly do's you want to put on there, which I just made them with some beads on these little, I don't even know what these are called. And at the end, I just twirled it around to get it to stop. And these are fun. I'm going to probably end up eventually giving all of these away in different blessing boxes. I might save one for myself. Maybe I'll save one and mail it to my sister. Okay, what else was I going to do? Oh, I want to give you a preview of two things. Okay, um, so you know how we made the drilled cork um, garland? Well, I'm thinking I'm going to try putting some drilled cork on one of these. This is a, a Holiday Living 60 count LED cool white lights that's on a battery and you could hang that you could set it on the top of your mantle set it on the top of a, a bookshelf um, weave it through a dough bowl and then just turn the battery on when you want it to be on um, this one came from Lowe's but you can find these also at Dollar Tree you can find these this idea everywhere so, let me show you. I am going to stop talking here soon, but I have one more thing to show you. Okay, this is what these look like. Um, it's just that little wire that has those teeny tiny little lights on it, and then you have a battery. And I'm sure this doesn't have, no, it doesn't have any batteries in it. I'll have to get that. So that's one thing we're going to be doing. And then on this keychain theme, I'm going to show you how you can use those wood beads that we picked up at Walmart on those Christmas garlands, and you may have some others, to make other keychains. This is super simple. So, and this, um, you can use this faux suede cording, or it could be real suede cording if you want. Um, this is super simple. So those are a couple things I have coming up. Lots of good things. I try to, as much as possible, I try to really mix it up because I got, I bought all of my corks at Goodwill in a big bag for $5.99. Okay, if you're watching now and you missed the beginning, um, as soon as I'm finished, go back and watch from the start on replay because that's where I show you everything and tell you where everything came from. And I give you some other ideas. This list. Looks silly to have so many necklaces on. <laughs> um, Linda Merrill says, I drink wine to get corks. I do too, but you know what? I don't drink any expensive wine because, you know, I'm frugal. <laughs> I mean, occasionally I'll have a, a glass from a good bottle of wine. Um, okay, Anne says that she got her corks at Amazon. I know you can order them on Etsy. You can um, go to your favorite restaurant or pub or bar and ask them if they would be willing to set aside their corks, you know, because they just discard all of that stuff for you. Um, you can ask friends and family to save them. Look at thrift stores every time I go to Goodwill lately. 
um, I see a couple of bags of corks. And sometimes they price them ridiculously, but mine, this is the one I'm operating from, and it had a lot more in it because I've made stuff. This whole bag was $5.99 at Goodwill several months ago. So, so just be looking and thinking and asking around. You saw so many corks at yard sales this summer. Dang, well next year you'll be able to get them and you will know what to do with them. Because we made, um, do I have any in here? Yeah, we made these tassels using vintage sheet music and those little wood pieces and just some twine. We made um, a, a long garland that had beads on it. It was beautiful. It's outside, out in the front. And then today I showed you how to make this. And I'm going to show you how to do something with these. And I'm going to show you how to make these. And we might, I think we probably will, make a pumpkin and maybe even a Christmas tree out of them. So there's so many things that you can do. The turquoise necklace looks good with my shirt, does it? Okay, it's just I have too many on. You can make these short also. I just thought they showed up more if they were long. And I didn't want to stop crocheting. Once you get started, if you crochet... It's addictive and it's good for you. It's good for your brain. It's good for your memory. It's good for your hand dexterity. Um, so, all right, well, I have certainly talked long enough, but I've really enjoyed it today and I hope that you have too. Um, if you have questions, here's what you need to do. Go back to the beginning of the video and rewatch up until the point that you that you hopped on. So say you hopped on at minute 15, you missed the first 15 minutes. Just go back, the video's here in the, on DIY Dreaming under the videos tab and you could click on it and watch it from the beginning or you can watch the whole thing through again. Um, if you have a simple question, feel free to ask me that in the comments, but I did explain everything as thoroughly as possible and um, it's a chain stitch, yep. And I just alternated between three and five chains before I, okay, this is, this is fun. You just thread all of your beads on to your, oh, I was gonna show you that, onto your uh, thread. And then as you're crocheting, you're going to, uh, this is what the, the thread looks like that I used. It's, it was from a craft store in Boise, Idaho. Probably craft warehouse. This was my favorite color. I think this is what I have on, this gray. It was a little bit on the pricier side, but I was enjoying myself and I wanted to keep going. So, all right. Um, if you have, please teach you the necklace. Okay, how about next week? Um, I think I have more um, cork ideas to show you. I wanna show you this. I have some Christmas, some fall stuff to show you. So we'll squeeze it in um, one day next week. So be looking for this. And if you for sure want to see it, and I'll show you a super simple way to do it, um, then do a this or a this. Say something in the comments and most important, Look up here, if you're watching on Facebook, up here to see if you have liked and followed DIY Dreaming, that's this page, and if you've turned on your notifications. And all of those things in combination might possibly mean that Facebook will, will include you when they distribute my craft videos. It's not guaranteed. Um, so you can always check back here at DIY Dreaming anytime you wanna see. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, like I do frequently, and you can't go back to sleep and you just wanna watch a craft video, just come here to DIY Dreaming, click on the videos tab. I label everything, 
except the things that are not not teaching a skill where I'm just blabbing. I don't label those, but um, everything's labeled so you can just scroll, scroll, scroll until you see something you want to watch and click that. Yes to the crocheted necklace. And I think also yes to the button bracelets. We'll spread that out a little bit. But for now, be look on the lookout for corks. Be on the lookout for wood beads. Um, be on the, outlook, on the lookout for buttons. And, oh, Judy said she crocheted since she was a little girl. Me too. And you know what? I, um, I will have to show you this another time, but um, through my Bible study, I participated in this program where when women found themselves pregnant and they weren't anticipating it and they were trying to decide what to do, um, where they would could get a free ultrasound, I made crocheted baby booties. And that place, it was a Christian place, they would um, give each lady a pair of hand crocheted, adorable, I need to do that again, baby booties, just with the hope that it would touch her heart and she would decide to keep her baby or uh, to have her baby and put it up for adoption, but not to go the other route. So, you have crocheted as a little girl too. Yeah, I made light pink mittens for my baby doll. I made booties. Um, I made tons of bookmarks with hearts and all kinds of things. You guys, we have so much in common, all of us. <laughs> this insatiable desire to create things. Okay, will I give a list of the supplies at the end of the wine court keychain? Yeah, I will. And I'll get pictures close up so you can see what you need to look for. All right, have a blessed rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I will get pictures of what we made. I'll put those here and also just on the DIY Dreaming page. Feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle if you saw some ideas here that you liked or that you think your friends might want to see or know more about. Um, yeah. Okay, Vicki says she's always wanted to learn how to crochet. Well, I'm a very rudimentary crocheter. I did also make a ton of squares that I used as um, to wash dishes. It's good for the soul. Yes, it absolutely is. In fact, I'm so motivated, I'm gonna get some of my string out and I am going to do some crocheting. First, I'll read your comments, so. All right, see you guys later. Have a great rest of your day.